Hi everyone. Thank you for taking the time during lunch to join us for um, this webinar. Um, you know, we're really excited to launch uh, some of these uh, changes to the Endowers Maker Trends portfolio. Um, just, just to make some quick introductions, um, my name is Brendan and I'm one of the senior client advisors at Endowas. And you know, in, in, in our role, um, what we do is really talk to clients every day, understand um, how can the Endowas platform help them, understand what are you know, their pain points with their finances and, and, um, and then from there we can talk about the different investment solutions and portfolios uh, on the Endowas platform. Of, of which uh, the Megatrends portfolio is also one of our satellite portfolios. And with me is Yuhan, um, uh, our investment lead in the investment office. Um, so really, we have some exciting changes lined up for the Megatrends portfolio, and we'll be using this session to walk you through some of the changes. Now, Yuhan, um, before we jump into the actual content of the webinar, and you know, while we maybe wait just a couple more minutes uh, for people to just kind of stream in, I, I hope you will oblige me if I make some small talk with you. Yeah, sure. Just let me know what it's about. Okay, great. So, you know, I want to talk to you about weather, right? You know, you know, Singapore, we love asking, you know, how's the weather? How's, how's you know, uh, talk about food and stuff like that. And we all love to talk about food, right, Johan? Yeah, I think this is the best time to be talking about food. It's the lunch hour after all. Right. Okay. So, you know, with regards to the weather, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm not sure. Did you feel like the most rainy weather in Singapore, you know, last year, was, it just felt like the rain will not let up at all and it just kept raining and raining and you know it really affected the way the way we we, we kind of lived our lives our travel patterns traffic was just heavier and you know it's just hard to even you know go to the park for a walk and you know for some reason i feel like we didn't experience that growing up or even just kind of like 10 15 years ago yeah now that you mentioned it mm. Okay, so I figured this would be a good uh, segue into the theme of our webinar, which is about mega trends. Pardon that, you know, that little small talk thing in the beginning. But really, I just wanted to say, to, to just kind of ask the audience, right? Did you know climate change is affecting many of our favorite foods, which, you know, uh, Yuhan just mentioned, such as, our, such as chicken rice and, and coffee. It is affecting rice yields and its nutritional value. Coffee is also sensitive to changes in temperature, rainfall, soil moisture, shrinking the areas that are suitable for coffee cultivation. And these then have spillover effects into a more expensive cup of coffee or food shortages, which hit the poorest the hardest. So Yuhan, um, why don't you kick things off and get us started on how the latest enhancements to the Megatrends portfolio addresses some of these changes, sorry, addresses some of these themes and how a fancy term like, you know, Megatrends really has implications for every single one of us in society. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Brendan. So let's get started. Uh, for those sitting their chicken rice while watching this, uh, please enjoy your lunch. So as usual, we have the uh, Slido enabled for questions. And uh, please feel free to log on and type in Megatrends to post your questions. Uh, for those who are new to Endow Us, this is also really the reason why we are founded. And a uh, snapshot of some of our shareholders on the next slide, of which uh, Endow Us uh, employees make up the largest shareholders uh, sorry, one more slide, and are very aligned with you as the uh, client. So, so just a quick update on our growth journey. We are proud to now manage and advise over 5 billion in uh, group client assets thanks to the uh, strong support from you, our clients, and also our investors, of course. So now just a quick recap on the Megatrends portfolio. Uh, yeah. So the core investment philosophy remains unchanged with the uh, recommended portfolio change aiming to help the uh, portfolio better fulfill its investment philosophy. Okay, Yuhan, um, I have a question, right? So, you know, megatrends is a common term being thrown around now. It's like the buzzword, right? Uh, AI and so on and so forth. How have we set up the portfolio to make it an attractive investment proposition and how do we diversify the portfolio? Could you perhaps speak a little bit about that? Yeah, so we have created the uh, Megatrends portfolio to provide investors essentially with exposure to global teams backed by uh, strong structural trends. With the funds selected largely aligned to three core teams we have identified as uh, firstly quality of health, environment, and then life. So because teams can go in and out of favor, we have gone with a core allocation to multi-thematic funds. Uh, 
uh, where this active managers aim to also generate alpha by selectively adding or removing teams. Supplementing these uh, multi-thematic funds are dedicated single team funds uh, that we and DAWAS believes uh, provide more targeted exposure to specialized teams. And last but not least, because Megatrends is also designed to be a satellite portfolio, it aims to provide diversification and diversification benefits that make it uh, complementary to our flagship portfolios. Okay, that sounds interesting, Yuhan. Thanks for sharing. Um, and it also seems like there are quite a few changes. So maybe you could just kind of uh, bring us through how the Megatrends portfolio looks like after these changes. Yeah. So we did actually make quite a few changes with the removal of four funds and the addition of five new funds uh, as highlighted in green. So you can see from the table, multi-thematic managers remain the core uh, with the Newberger Berman Global Equity Mega Trends Fund replacing thematics meta. Uh, Janus Henderson Biotech replaces the AB International Healthcare Fund in the quality of health bucket, while the uh, Deutsche or DWS Global Agribusiness and GMO Climate Change uh, taking the places of BlackRock Nutrition and Schroeder Global Climate Change in the uh, environment bucket. And uh, last but not least as well, uh, the thematics AI and robotics is another newly introduced fund in the live segment. Okay, um, yeah, Yuhan, thanks so much. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but these names seem to also be quite recent additions to you know, the Endowas uh, Fund Smart platform, right? So um, could you share a bit about how, how do these funds actually enhance the Megatrends portfolio? Yeah, so, so that's a great observation, Brandon. So part of what the investment office does is to uh, constantly source for quality funds that become available for uh, retail investors in Singapore. And these are some of the funds that we have identified in recent quarters. So we always adopt a building blocks approach whereby funds are made uh, individually available uh, before they go into any portfolio. So let us now also go deeper into the reasons behind the changes to the uh, maker trends portfolio. So as mentioned earlier, the uh, Megatrends aims, uh, portfolio aims to provide exposure to these three main teams. With the uh, recommended portfolio change, we are aiming for the portfolio to provide a puncher exposure to such teams. So there are two implementations we have made. The first is the uh, introduction of new funds that enhance uh, teams or sub-teams, with the second being the introduction of new funds that provide exposure to new teams or sub-teams as well. So for the first implementation, this is where the uh, additions of uh, DWS Agribusiness, GMO Climate Change, and the Newberger Berman Megatrends uh, portfolio come in. For the DWS Agribusiness, we've actually selected a fund as invest across the uh, whole agricultural value chain, including uh, upstream companies. So upstream companies include inputs to agriculture, such as uh, seeds and fertilizer. And in addition to the bottom-up selection, uh, the team also considers macroeconomic factors such as uh, geopolitical tensions and supply chain issues. As such, we believe the fund is actually more reactive to changes in food prices. And this was actually one of the key reasons why the fund increased its allocation to fertilizers in uh, 2021 uh, and in the later half of 2020. So the increased allocations in turn allowed the fund to capture the upside from a corresponding increase in uh, fertilizer prices. So we believe the fund actually provides the mega trends portfolio with a greater sensitivity to changes in the uh, each fund. Uh, companies focus on climate change mitigation and adaptation solutions. What we like about the fund is its strong focus on purity defined as the uh, percentage of the business driven by efforts to uh, combat climate change. So while stock selection remains key, uh, the fund does have a defined strategic allocation to ensure proper diversification and to balance the importance of a sector against its uh, investability. GMO also prides itself on its uh, valuation, value orientation bias, which helps get the fund away from investing in sectors that might be overvalued. So as we can see from the uh, tables on the right, uh, the fund provides differentiated exposure to areas like copper, water, and precision agriculture, while having a, or retaining a core focus on energy efficiency and clean energy. Also looking at the fund's top holdings, we can see that the top holdings are indeed companies with a strong uh, focus on the climate transition segment, which is where we believe the fund adds value to the uh, megatrends portfolio. Its investment in real assets may also provide uh, some form of inflation hedging benefits. And third, we have the uh, Newberger Berman Global Equity Megatrends, uh, 
which is a multi-thematic portfolio with a successful track record spanning uh, more than 30 years. So what the team also seeks to identify long-term teams, uh, companies are actually selected based on their individual positive qualities and strengths, uh, with teams actually acting more as a supportive tailwind. So what is unique about this fund is uh, its high conviction approach of uh, 20 to 30 names. And as a result, the fund provides targeted exposure to teams via uh, concentrated holdings, with the fund's returns thus relying more on stock selection uh, than the overall equity market's performance. So on the right is a quick snapshot of a representative account following the strategy, uh, showing how the fund's multi-thematic approach actually adds value uh, from diversification. Thank you, Han. And I mean, for, for those who are watching online, you know, some of these images may you know, may be a little bit difficult to see, but not to worry. There, there'll actually be an article uh, that's published, so you can you can zoom in and there's more. Uh, you can look at the details a bit bit better. Okay, so Yuhan, you know, thanks thanks so much. You know, those are three very interesting funds, and you know, it seems like they provide quite unique exposure to sectors like upstream agricultural companies, climate change, you know, related real assets, and also a very as you said, punchy and concentrated multi-thematic portfolio. And you know, I have to admit, when I was when I was looking at when I was when I was looking at some of these changes, I was you know I was wondering you know what exactly is it about um, uh, areas like copper, which you mentioned, right? And then uh, I, I then did some research and found out that copper is used in clean energy technologies like solar panels, EVs, battery storage, smart grids, uh, so on and so forth, right? And okay. also you know the the new burger fund, you know I was I was I was quite uh, you know it was, it was quite interesting to me at least, you know. Um, they contain names that we are familiar with, like Expedia, Alibaba, and even pet retailing companies, right? And even companies that do recycling of medical waste. So I think that's really quite diverse and quite interesting. So um, now that we've talked about the first implementation, right? Um, could we, you know, could you share with us a little bit more about the second implementation and whether you know the underlying funds have the same intended impact as well? Yeah, that's a good question. Um... So with the second implementation, the objective is actually slightly different. Uh, as this time around, we are aiming to introduce new teams via the addition of funds uh, that we believe provide the best exposure. So first up is a biotechnology fund by Janice Henderson. So I'm personally a fan of the biotech sector and have quite a bit of investments in that sector, uh, as the constant innovations and breakthroughs are especially exciting. So as you can see from the graph on the right, uh, the cost of sequencing a genome has gone down significantly from 100 million in 2001 uh, to a very affordable cost of less than $1,000. So the time required has declined substantially, substantially as well. And this investment has provided the foundation for medical, many medical breakthroughs. Uh, for those who are interested to find out more, you can actually uh, Google this company called Illumina, uh, which is one of the companies actually driving this uh, change in the cost of sequencing genome. So the Janus Henderson Fund is actually one that focuses specifically on the biotech sector, uh, where it aims to seek out fundamentally undervalued companies. And because the VAC sector is a highly volatile one, uh, the team utilizes a value at risk framework that aims to uh, mitigate such risk. It does have a bias towards uh, smaller developmental stage companies uh, that may be under-researched, and part of its investment process entails uh, engagement with industry professionals like physicians to learn more about the companies and their drug development. So the next slide, we can see how the uh, biotech sector's growth actually outstrips that of both the healthcare and uh, the broader MISCI equity index. And so having the fund actually provides the uh, mega trends portfolio with meaningful exposure to the uh, biotech sector. Interesting, Yuhan. You know, um, with all these uh, advancements in, in medical technology, you know, you know, just like how in, in, in the, for Chinese New Year, we wish our elders, um, you know, that, that they live to a right old age and buy toll CLL. Hopefully these uh, medical technologies have a very, very real uh, kind of impact uh, in, in, in helping us live more healthily and longer yeah. and better. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Okay, anyway, the next uh, fund we are introducing is actually the thematics AI and robotics. Um, so now artificial intelligence is obviously something that has uh, captured our imagination in the past few months as the ability of AI has uh, constantly been improving. However, as with many new or early technologies, uh, whether it can be you know, successfully transplanted to actual applications remains to be seen, and that typically takes uh, quite a while. So for the thematics fund, its uh, investment approach is actually centered around uh, profitable 
well-capitalized companies within the uh, AI, robotics, and automation value chain. So what this actually means is that the invested companies have already found a way to apply the use of AI and or robotics to uh, actual industrial application. So on the right, we can observe six investment teams that the uh, fund invests in, with automation actually a common keyword you find among uh, most of these six teams. And uh, important to note is the fund's holdings do not have much overlap with the Magnificent Seven or other popular names that you might find in other technology portfolios, such as our own and our uh, tech portfolio, uh, as seen in its top five holdings. So this is where we believe the fund actually adds value to the megatrends portfolio, as it's still able to provide exposure to the uh, technology sector's strong growth potential while being differentiated from the traditional technology portfolios. Now, Brendan, because you're my co-presenter today, I've given you an early sneak peek of the portfolio. Uh, do, you want us, do you want to take us through how the new megatrends portfolio actually looks and feels after the changes? Sure, sure. My, my pleasure. Okay, so, you know, as part of uh, our job in the client team, right, uh, you know, one of the roles that we, that we, that we do is really to, to help clients review their portfolios and monitor their portfolios. And in terms of the performance, um, we do see a noticeable uptick compared to the old portfolio. You know, if you look at this chart over here on the screen, the new portfolio also does seem to have outperformed the MSCI All Country World Index benchmark uh, quite handily. Okay, and moving on to the next slide, we also see that the statistics here do seem to suggest several improvements. Um, we see, first of all, a higher upside capture relative to the benchmark MSCI All Country World Index. This means in simple terms that when market conditions are favorable and the market is trending upwards, the new portfolio should perform better than the existing portfolio. And the second um, kind of key call out is the higher beta and volatility. This is in line with the changes we have made to allow the portfolio to be, as you wanted, punchier when aiming to capture the growth from mega trends. So larger swings in the portfolio's daily and monthly returns and a greater sensitivity to market conditions are to be expected. Yeah, so those are good observations, Brendan. Um, so hindsight is often needs to better optimize historical returns. Uh, but we believe that the more robust capturing of underlying mega trends, uh, introduction of new funds or sub-teams have actually contributed to the improved performance. So the quality of a fund's thematic process and management team is of a uh, key importance to us, for which we look beyond just performance. So notably, some of the new funds uh, are still in the midst of a drawdown, uh, but nonetheless, we remain committed in the ability of these funds to outperform over the long term as driven by uh, team selection and trend exposure. So the next slide also shows a key thought process when designing the uh, original portfolio, and it continues to hold true for the new portfolio. As you can see, there's very little common holdings overlap between each of the underlying funds, as well as with the broader MSCI equity index, uh, suggesting that the megatrends portfolio should continue to provide uh, diversification benefits to a traditional equity portfolio. And on the next slide, we have the uh, geographical allocation comparison. Uh, so that's a slight increase in the uh, allocation to the US at the expense of Europe. And on the next slide, we have uh, the sector allocation. We can observe that the fund remains largely allocated to the healthcare, industrials, and technology sectors. So this is in line with the uh, global trends that the mega trends portfolio actually aims to provide exposure to uh, with this sector serving as either beneficiaries or enablers of such trends. So notably, the consumer sectors now uh, occupy a lower weight, while the exposure to basic materials and uh, energy sectors have increased due to a more targeted focus within the uh, climate transition team. Now, Brendan, having talked about all the changes and how to potentially impact the portfolio, uh, could you walk us through how an existing investor can actually opt in for the uh, recommended changes? Sure, Yuhan. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing. Um, in fact, this is very, very fresh in my mind because I just accepted the change uh, myself uh, this morning, actually, uh, on the way to work. So, um, yeah, having a megatrends portfolio myself, um, basically, the process is super simple. Um, I think for many of us who, who have had, you know, the other uh, endowed portfolios like uh, Cashmart and, and, and the flagship portfolios, you uh, would have already gone through some of these changes. But nevertheless, if you can see on your screen, um, we've provided some quick snapshots on how you can accept the, the recommended portfolio change. 
So um, if you're logging into your platform, you can click on the, the top right hand corners um, bell icon, the notification icon. And then from there, you can, you can just follow the steps over there and, and just click into it. And they will explain again, um, the kind of changes to you um, in a more summarized form, um, you know, like what you mentioned earlier. And um, of course, of course, if you if you if you have received the email, you can also just go to the email and click on the, the kind of button from there, and it will also lead you into the platform uh, where you can then accept the changes, right? Yeah. So um, hopefully, hopefully you guys uh, you know uh, find it easy to accept the changes, and you, you guys um, you know are excited about the changes. Um, yeah, the, the screenshots are up on the screen again. Um, this, this this shouldn't be uh, too difficult for for, for everyone. Um, but yeah, if you if you do have um, any difficulties accepting the changes or finding or you know more queries for the changes, uh, feel free to to contact Endowas uh, through the usual means. Um, you can reply any one of the Endowas emails, and it will go and, and it will kind of raise a support ticket uh, and to to, uh, to to assist. Okay, so now yeah, we do have yeah. quite a bit of time for questions. <laughs> Do you want do you want to run us through some of the sure yeah yeah thanks Yuan. so um, basically uh, we're having the live q a section over here yeah um i think on the slido that you guys have been posting questions to yeah over here you, for those who haven't logged on you can you can just kind of join again um with, with the keyword mega trends and um yeah i mean that we've we've we've, we've, we've uh with a very good team who, who have been handling some of the questions already on the slido so um, yeah, thanks so much for your questions. I see there are a few more questions, um, Yuhan, you know, really that uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here to, to, to kind of answer, right? So maybe I'll start with um, the most upvoted question, the most popular question, yeah, right? Yeah. Which is, um, and that was likes the biotech fund and I like the returns. Why didn't you allocate more to this biotech fund in the portfolio? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Brandon. So this is a great question. Uh, I mean, honestly, if this was my own portfolio, I would have probably 90 plus percent allocated to biotech uh, as my mom and sis would know. Uh, but so when we construct a portfolio, this is done in a very holistic way, uh, where even though a sector or fund has very promising returns, uh, we are still very cognizant of the uh, manager diversification or rather single manager risk and thematic risk. So the biotech fund is obviously something that uh, uh, it's very exciting. Uh, but as mentioned earlier, it's very volatile as well. Uh, so we can't actually have too much allocation to it because essentially what this means is that the mega trends portfolio will be heavily reliant on the biotech performance, uh, biotech funds performance. So just do a quick example. Let's say uh, this biotech fund can swing upwards of 30% and maybe downwards of 30%. Whereas the other funds have a more, I guess, constrained range of maybe 10 to negative 10%. If the allocation to the biotech fund is uh, unusually large, it means that the mega transport portfolio is actually really reliant on how the biotech funds uh, is performing. Uh, so we don't want to have this too much concentrated exposure in both one manager and one uh, uh, one team. And also to my point earlier about how we are going with a core multi-thematic approach, the biotech segment can actually fall our favor as we actually noticed in the uh, recent few quarters and so this is where the active multi-thematic managers can actually dial down the allocation uh, to the biotech sector if they do have any exposure and actually allocate more to, for example, AI and robotics uh, that have been you know, more in favor with uh, investors recently. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Yuan. And, and I think just, just also for, for you know, the, the, the kind of audience who's dialing in, right? When you, when you create a, a fun smart platform on, the, on, on Endowas, and if you if you if you type in a particular fund and you choose a particular fund, it will actually show you the kind of risk statistics over there, mm. like you know the kind of range of returns you can expect. How does it look like during good times? How does it look like during bad times? And you can then make uh, an informed decision as to how this fits into your kind of risk profile as well. I mean, I think diversification is is is, is one of the ways in which um, we kind of reduce risk because we you know as investors we always we always have imperfect information. Uh, even though sometimes certain teams or certain trends look to be um, here to stay, right? But you know, at the end of the day, every every kind of investment comes with risk, and and uh, you know, as part of the Endowas kind of philosophy of risk management and diversification, I guess that's why 
we also allocate to to, to more to other funds in the mega trends uh, portfolio as well. Okay, um, moving on to the second most popular question, um, Yuhan, it's is now a good time to reallocate from the flagship to the mega trends portfolio. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question as well. So in the insights article that we post for the uh, mega trends RPC. Uh, on the bottom, there's actually a segment discussing our views on a core and satellite approach. So core is a, a portfolio like the flagship where it's designed to be a portfolio's or client's mainstay in a portfolio. Uh, so it provides a very broad diversified exposure to, I guess, generally global equities. Whereas the Megatrends portfolio, like our other satellite, is meant to be a little bit more tactical or to reflect a, a individual client's um, I guess a uh, certain attraction to maybe biotech or technology or for example ESG as well. So whether it's a good time to reallocate from flagship to mega trend, I think it really depends on uh, what you are looking for. If you're looking for a more targeted approach to some of the teams that we have identified, uh, then you could possibly reallocate some, but flagship should always be the core because it's meant to be that stable, I guess, anchor in most uh, clients' portfolios. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I guess I guess that there was also another question on on. Uh, I mean, since since we're on this topic, there was a question on the YouTube chat uh, that was asking, you know, like what, like really in simple terms, what is the fundamental uh, value proposition uh, of the of the of the mega trend? Um, just kind of like in in in, in simple in simple terms, uh, Yuan, if you would. Uh, sorry, come again. Yeah, basically, the person was asking, um, in very simple terms, yeah, what would be the fundamental value proposition? Of the mega trend portfolio. I mean, you mentioned mm -hmm. as part okay. of the satellite portfolio yeah, and, yeah. and so on. But yeah. would you say would you say in even simpler terms, there's there's, there's another way to kind of distill it? Or? Yeah, I guess for the mega trend portfolio, you can view it as actually a more high octane uh, version. So the flagship is designed to have a, a to provide investors with a very low cost, uh, low tracking error to uh, global equities or global fixed income. Uh, the mega trend portfolio is designed to be punchier. So one of our stated objectives is actually to outperform the uh, MSCI Equi Index uh, because we believe the underlying global teams uh, actually have higher potential growth uh, than both GDP growth and also uh, the broader MISCI Equi Index. Um, so that is one, I guess, key point if you're looking for higher growth. The second is also, as we mentioned earlier, the diversification and uh, depreciation benefits. So uh, we showed in the one of the slides earlier that uh, compared to the MISCI Equi, uh, the underlying funds as well as the uh, mega trends portfolio actually has a very low overlap with uh, the uh, MISCI Equity broader index. Uh, so if that further diversification or you know uh, getting exposure to some of the more interesting segments is uh, your objective, then that's where uh, the mega trends portfolio can possibly fit in your uh, investment. Yeah, th yeah. Thanks, Yuhan. Uh, and, and maybe just one quick point uh, to that to that um, to that particular uh, you know viewer who asked that question, right? I think I think one of the in fact this is one of the questions we get a lot in the client team as well. Mm. Like, how much do we allocate to these strategies, and how do they kind of you know what's what's the value proposition? How how do they kind of fit in with my cash map portfolios? How does this fit in with my flagship portfolios and so on? So the thing is, sometimes um, these portfolios are not exactly mutually exclusive. Mm. Like if you do a mega trend portfolio, you can't do um, some of the other portfolios, right? As as Yuhan said. You know the core portfolio or the flagship portfolio. Um, we would normally advise that it forms the foundation or the kind of bedrock of your overall kind of asset allocation, right? Because it's so well diversified globally and so on. And I think another thing to think about when building a core portfolio versus something like a mega trend portfolio is that a core portfolio should be something that meets very bread and butter kind of um, um, financial needs uh, and aspirations. It could be to provide income for retirement. It could be to plan for, you know, retirement, uh, retirement port portfolio in 15, 20 years. Just that kind of very basic human need um, that, that, that we, that we kind of have to, to, to want to retire well and live well, right? So um, what, what we would normally say is to be very mindful about what you're trying to achieve uh, with the mega trends portfolio and think about um, when you need the money. You know, like if, if it's something that is you you, you might need uh, on, on a very short term uh, kind of basis for a housing down payment or medical expense, then clearly the mega trends portfolio may not be something that's the most suitable for that, um, given the high volatility uh, that that you have kind of mentioned, right? Um, yeah, so I think 
Um, we've covered some of the top questions already. Maybe, okay, Johan, this is a this is an interesting question. I mean, yep. it's, it's already been been kind of addressed by the by the moderator, but someone actually asked for different risk levels for the mega trends portfolio, and I think biotech. I think you know everyone wants to. Every, everyone was quite intrigued by your by your interest in biotech, <laughs> yeah. uh, and if they wanted more interest in, in kind of biotech. Um, but but yeah, that, that question has been answered on, on Slido already. Mm -hmm. um, that you know the, the satellite portfolios are designed to target a single risk level, um, and, and and typically have just one asset class, right? Yeah. As compared to the core portfolios, which um, allow you to have you know a balanced portfolio and so on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as mentioned earlier, also if you really like um, um, biotech, um, right? You you can always feel free to have one mega trends portfolio. And then have another fund smart on the side where you add on uh, more of the biotech fund. Um, you know, if you're very very bullish about it, right? Yeah. But for the time being, uh, mega trends portfolio versus the uh, just having the new yeah. Berman fund. Yeah. Uh, so that's. A good question and actually can be asked also uh, why not just invest in the other two multi thematic funds as well the uh, AB uh, global thematic sustainable thematic as well as the uh, alliance uh, thematica fund um, so again this goes back to i guess the manager diversification so new burger berman specifically it's a very concentrated portfolio as we mentioned earlier just 20 to 30 names uh, we do have conviction in the manager's stock selection abilities However, because it's such a concentrated portfolio, there can be environments where uh, the fund might not uh, do well if the environment is not conducive for the fund. Uh, likewise, for the multi-thematic funds, uh, sometimes the teams that they selected may fall in favor as well. Uh, so in, in constructing the portfolio in a holistic way, again, uh, we believe this core approach to three multi-thematic funds uh, supplemented by uh, five other single thematic funds actually really adds value because uh, like the slide for the uh, trends, uh, sorry, portfolio earlier, you can see uh, different trends or teams actually perform well in different years. So ideally, when you have a portfolio of, uh, I guess, three core teams and maybe nine to 10 sub teams, uh, the idea is that when teams perform differently, as a whole, the portfolio can be a bit resilient to uh, the volatile nature of these teams. Um, there's also this question on changing the tilt of the portfolio towards environment. Uh, so first, philosophically, in terms of the overall exposure, we're not changing too much. Uh, but in terms of actual exposure to, for example, climate change transition, uh, so one of the key difference between uh, GMO climate change and uh, Schroeder's climate change fund is that uh, the purity factor uh, that the GMO climate change focuses on. So as we see, the GMO climate change fund, it's really into uh, companies uh, providing solar power, I guess, uh, building uh, uh, infrastructure for green energy. Uh, so in that in that sense, uh, there is a lot more, uh, I guess, uh, investment into the materials sector, where Schroders does have a more, uh, I guess, relaxed view on what fits into climate change. So they do have certain uh, companies that are maybe in the tech sector uh, that have an indirect, I guess, uh, uh, I guess, Direct exposure to the climate change transition. Yeah. So um, there is also an important question about the biggest risk for this portfolio. So thanks for asking. That is actually very relevant. Uh, so that next, that definitely involves uh, whether the uh, teams that we have selected or the multi multi thematic managers have selected would work well as well. Uh, so for example, biotech has gone through quite a difficult uh, few quarters. So you can see the uh, XPI or sorry, the biotech index is uh, still in the midst of its trial and it's not recovered yet. And then in the US, especially sometimes it's actually vulnerable to uh, geopolitical tensions. Uh, sorry, uh, political the political elections, political elections, because the Democrats tend to be uh, I guess supporters of bringing uh, drug prices down. Uh, the climate change team has also been uh, under a bit of pressure in recent months. Uh, or quarters, because with the uh, talk about recession and energy, uh, I guess uh, security, a lot of companies, have, uh, sorry, a lot of countries have actually switched back to uh, utilizing coal and oil. Uh, so some of the uh, I guess bids for 
like building offshore wind uh, or even solar uh, solar facilities have actually been uh, dying down. So that's actually one of the risks as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Johan. Um, I see some interesting new questions coming in. Um, one of which is whether we can share some insights on about and, and any thoughts on yeah so so again back to my <laughs> bias on biotech uh, the reason why I like it so much is I, I think this is a sector that's actually very resilient uh, so for example treating uh, diseases or illnesses like cancer uh, things that's uh, very relevant as well like a muscular dystrophy these are things that uh, basically doesn't matter whether the economy is in a recession or in a, in a very boom boom period. So basically, if a company comes up with a treatment of cancer, you can be rest assured that this company is going to uh, double, triple, and possibly reach billions of revenues in a year. Um, so that partly relates to the fact that Biotrend has been bidden down for quite some time. Uh, so the valuations for that is actually quite attractive. So um, I think a lot of people in our team also believe that the biotech uh, sector is poised for a rebound. Uh, and so you can actually gain exposure from it through the uh, mega trends portfolio. Uh, the for most of the other trends, so the reason why we've selected uh, them is because we believe these are really actually long term structural trends. So like the climate change transition uh, team that I, I mentioned earlier, that's also under a bit of pressure. Uh, we believe that should come about or should do better, I guess, in the this year or next, uh, because the investments. Uh, for this uh, infrastructure projects are actually still very real. Uh, so for some of you who might know, uh, the Biden administration actually passed the uh, Inflation uh, Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Bill, and that's actually to promote uh, building our infrastructure and clean energy as well. And that is actually a, a big tailwind for uh, the climate transition uh, team. Yeah. Thank you, Yuan. And one, perhaps one of the last kind of like few kind of questions, um, would you say that these portfolios have any kind of exposure to crypto at all, uh, Yuhan? I mean, it, it is a trend, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. So crypto is always a, I guess, an interesting topic. We can see how violently it falls into favor and falls out of favor. So I guess fundamentally, the question is around whether. Uh, so I, I I might get some pause on this, but whether it actually adds value to the real life applications we see. I mean, there's also, there's definitely cost for saying uh, it does, uh, I guess, make transactions a lot easier. But as with the thematics and robotics uh, fund, uh, when we look at teams, we want it to ideally be things that can be, you know, have actual applications, like the use of robots and, and automating things in the factories or hospitals. So crypto to us is still a very uh, early in essence, uh, I guess, technology if you call it so probably not something we would be looking at in the near future or at least uh, we would likely wait for it to settle down you know less hot money and more of a institutional asset class and and, and i mean some of the exposure could be indirect also right mm. it could be through like, i don't know what semiconductor yeah, yeah. or, or, or stuff like that right yeah. you say data centers mm. i don't know yeah okay um yeah guys i uh, hope yeah, I hope um, you know we've answered most of the questions. Uh, keep them coming, you know, uh, even after this webinar. Um, yeah, you really, you know, all these suggestions and questions um, help us, you know, um, improve the portfolios further uh, in the future as well. And it's always interesting to kind of know what clients are thinking about, um, you know, when they look at the, the different portfolios. So once again, you know, just to kind of summarize really quickly, um, do think about the risk um, of the portfolio. Do think about your objectives when investing in these uh, portfolios and um, you know diversification is important so as much as something uh, may seem very trendy do always kind of keep an eye out for the risk and whether it's suitable um, you know for where you you know for your for your kind of station in life and you know your own kind of uh, risk profile as well there's no point being something very trendy if you're losing sleep at night right 
think that's 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 one of the things that we, we always like to tell our clients that um, you know having peace of mind and, and all that with your investments is is, is is one of the best things that you can you can kind of do um, for your portfolio for yourself and for your mental health right mental health is also a mega trend um, so <laughs> so uh, yeah I think um, with 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 that you know we will kind of um, wrap up and maybe just one quick uh, kind of plug for you know the, the uh, Endowers client team. Um, these are some of the you know the very wonderful team members that we have on the team. Um, and feel free to to sign up for this um, uh, demo session that we host uh, you know every every Friday um, uh, at, you know at 12 p.m. So just scan a QR code and you can always just get a sense of what the Endowers platform is like. No obligations. And you know, just make sure you feel comfortable um, before you kind of make your first investment. Um, with that, wishing everyone a kind of good day ahead, a good rest of the week, good rest of you know Chinese New Year, um, you know, and, and have a good lunch. Yeah, thank you so Thank much, you, everyone. Bye bye.